Welcome back to our studies from 2 Peter. If you'll take your Bibles and turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, we're going to pick up with the famous passages adding to our faith. It's good to be with you tonight. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ. We meet at 689 North Main Street in Russellville, and we invite you to worship with us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock as we have our Bible classes that night and continue the lessons that we began on Sunday mornings. Our lesson for this next week is going to center around the temptations that Jesus endured from Satan, so we hope that you'll come and be a part of that study. Our building is located next to Kentucky Fried Chicken, so if you're familiar with Russellville, you'll know where that is. But if you will, just do a Google search and find our website. You'll have links to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, which this program is airing on right now, and um, ways to contact us. Preferably, if you'd email us, Northside Church of Christ at hotmail.com. We'd love to take your questions or comments about our lessons. We'd love to set up a Bible study with you and talk about God's Word face to face. And if you are uh, interested in uh, so coming up with some topics for lessons that you would like to hear in a video series, just let me know. Love to hear from you. Love to hear the thoughts of our community and the people that are joining us in these studies. But um, what we'd really like to do is uh, get into our study this evening and talk about uh, Peter's, I think, the things that he learned uh, to grow in his faith. Because throughout this study, we've talked a lot about Peter's faith himself. Though he was inspired by God as an apostle chosen by Jesus Christ, uh, he was an elder, a preacher and teacher in the church of our Lord, uh, he still experienced these things. So he writes from a unique perspective in the fact that his faith was, it's kind of like, I like to describe it like a roller coaster ride, you might say. Sometimes it was up, sometimes it was down. And we have more stories about the, uh, the high times and the low times of Peter's faith than really any other's uh, apostle or disciple throughout the Bible. So we're going to find, in a lot of cases, we are a lot like Peter. I would like to have the strength and faith that Paul showed after he became a Christian, uh, pretty consistent along the lines. Uh, but Peter had the most hiccups, and he was the one that, I think, learned the, the greater lessons. We usually learn to appreciate the gospel of the Lord, unfortunately, after we've made some, a few mistakes. But what we find in that is the great blessing that we have in forgiveness, And uh, that comes from God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So with that, we want to add to our faith. You know, first off, you need to add some faith. (laughs) Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God is our source of faith, Romans chapter 10 and 17. So you as a Bible student will learn from the Bible um, how to begin that faith, how to begin that, that road of understanding in the Lord. But then you'll want to grow in it. Uh, it's not something that you just do and you're baptized into Christ and then you just go on with your life. It's uh, It becomes a part of who you are, a part of your daily life, a part of how you uh, you know, act in, in every aspect of your life, spiritually and physically as well. And you become a well-rounded person and uh, wholesome in your life with godly principles and all that you do. So you'll find in these next few characteristics that we read about, and you know we're not going to look at them one by one and, and do an entire lesson on them, though we could, and I'm sure you'd hear plenty of lessons on diligence or self-control and brotherly kindness. You know, those are the things we talk about all the time. And so what, I, what I'm telling you is that I believe that they're all done simultaneously. It's not, hey, let's 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 work on perseverance this week and we'll get to the brotherly kindness thing next week. <laughs> I think a lot of them are simultaneously uh, shown in a person's character as they grow in Jesus Christ and especially as they grow in their relationships with each other. This goes back to like the 10 commandments for instance, you know, the first portion of the Ten Commandments has a lot to do with our relationship with God, and the second half is actually deals with our life here on this earth, how we treat our fellow man, and what we should, uh, uh, you know, strive for, and the things that we should avoid. 
Uh, just go back and read those commandments and you'll see that interesting connection that it has to our everyday lives. Well, in these characteristics, these are characteristics that oftentimes we'll find are easy to put on when we walk into a church building, where we're getting ready to bow our heads in prayer and worship God. But what about that Monday morning? What about when you're going out the rest of the week? Are you going to practice brotherly kindness and love and godliness? And these are the things that we are to add to our faith, and that is to add to our character, add to who we are as a people, and uh, to grow in the Lord. So let's read, and uh, we're just going to read uh, verses 5 through 7 for now, and then we'll finish up with the rest of the verses later. Verse 5 says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Don't be scared by this list. <laughs> it's not just a to-do list, but it's a, it is to be who you are. And most people want to be like this. Most people want other people to be like this toward them. So it only stands to reason that we should want to be the kind of people that we want treating us in that way. You see what I mean? If we want to... Uh, you know, people to be virtuous around us with a, a high moral excellence, um, then we're going to want to behave that way ourselves. Uh, don't you want people to watch their language when they are around you? Watch their behavior and their attitude? Oftentimes, I see people reacting to negative behavior and language in the world uh, around children. I hear that a lot. You know, there's kids present. Don't talk that way. Well, there are adults present too. Don't talk that way. We need to be very careful about how we express ourselves in our daily lives because we are influencing one another. And yes, children are a motivator. I'll tell you, you know, having children motivates you to you know, clean up your act pretty quick, I, I will say. But then, we, of course, we have the realization that you know, adults are people too. And uh, we need to be respectful toward all men everywhere. And so we go on to knowledge. You know, knowledge is something that we grow in, obviously, when we are studying God's Word. I believe there was a time, even in the United States of America, where a lot of colleges, prominent colleges in our world today, started off as Bible colleges. And I'm not here to argue the merits of Bible colleges or not. I'm just here to tell you that at one time, the way people learned to read and write was by searching the scriptures, studying God's word. If only it were that way today. Another thing that comes to mind is a lot of people um, you know, that are popular in music, uh, sometimes rock and roll, a lot of times country, you'll find a lot of them had their origins singing in church, you know, and they got their start there. When did we change? When did we start going into, um, you know, secularism in so much of our daily life? Um, when did we leave the church to join the world, in other words? And uh, so many have chosen a, a path of ungodliness. Many have chosen a path of educating and being more worried about education from academics rather than God's word. And so it's just a shame. But what we find here is that knowledge is what God's always wanted us to have. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4 and verse 6. And then, of course, what does that teach us? That teaches us self-control. How are we going to learn self-control? I find that a lot of people learn lessons about self-control and patience, which will, uh, is the next point, actually, perseverance, that um, they often learn those things through the mistakes that they make in life. How often does a person learn self-control just from reading the Bible and say, okay, I'm going to do that? Well, that's the way it should be, isn't it? <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, we tend to allow mistakes to be our greatest teacher. And then we look at the Bible and say, oh yeah, if only I had done what the scripture said from the beginning and uh, before we make those mistakes in life. And of course, perseverance. I'm reading from the New King James Version, by the way, and I know that other translations will use variations of some of these words, but they all mean the same thing. And then, of course, adding to our perseverance, or adding to our self-control perseverance, um, sometimes comes with the great lessons in life. I had a group I was studying with years ago say, 
you know, we, we want patience, but we're afraid to pray for it because God might dump a lot of troubles on us to uh, teach, teach us those lessons. And, you know, it's true. We have to deal with troubles in life uh, to overcome and be patient and persevere through trying times. Uh, you know, but God just doesn't dump troubles on our life. Troubles in life are always going to be there. You're going to find that when it comes to life, you have no choice but to be patient. Just You just got no choice. You have to wait in traffic. You, there's nothing that you can do to get around it. You 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 have to wait for the passing of a you know of a of a pain uh, that you might have in your body. These things take time to overcome. We live in a society where we want everything and we want it right now. Um, you know, it used to be you go to a fast food place. Well, they still call them that, but you know, not as fast as they used to be. And here's the thing: a lot of them will tell you, look. You know, if you want something fresh, it's going to take time to prepare. I pull up in drive throughs and I'll get a meal. And they'll say, could you pull forward? Uh, we're going to make this fresh. And I'm like, fresh and hot? I'm willing to wait. Uh, so just be sure to kind of, you know, schedule in your time a little bit of extra time so that you can get better quality. And, and that's not just in, you know, a goofy example like fast food, but it's in every aspect of your life. Because most of the time you're going to have to be patient with someone else. And a lot of times, you're going to have to be patient with someone who's not patient. And that will try your patience. But anyway, these are characteristics we are to have in our daily lives. And it's a characteristic that we are to have in the Word of God as well. You know, it's a big old book. It's going to take us a while to get through it and study it and learn it. Um, you know, give God that time to work His work in your life. And you've got to be patient with God. You've got to be patient with His Bible. You've got to be patient with your teachers. I ask you to be patient with me. But adding to your faith also uh, comes uh, with probably what most people might consider the number one thing, and that is godliness. You know, in everything, even the qualities that we're talking about right now, those are forms of godliness. So how do we separate godliness just by description from the, the good characteristics I'm to have? Well, you know, I've met nice atheists I've met kind people who were, um, quite frankly, um, you know, not Christians, sinners in the world. And um, it doesn't mean that people can't be kind and moral. So what are they lacking? You know, they might be the mo most patient person you ever met. They might have self-control and aspects of virtue and moral excellence, but they don't have God in their lives. So they're not doing things according to a godly way. Now, the first thing we have to have in regard to godliness is that Bible knowledge that we talked about a few moments ago. We've got to know how to do things the way God wants them done. It's not just a sense of, of spirituality that you might have in your life, but it's worshiping God like God wants to be worshipped. It's behaving in our lives like God would have us behave. Do things not only from a moral standpoint, but do them because this is what God has determined in our lives. This is what God has directed us to be and to do. So godliness takes on many forms. It's not just kind acts and goodness, but it is sticking to his doctrine. It is searching the scriptures to find out what is so. Uh, it's believing and behaving according to godly ways, taking a stand against sin. That's a form of godliness as well, to know the difference between right and wrong. You see my point. And when you read through the Bible, you see the side that you need to be on, and that is the side of God. But what do you add to godliness? Well, brotherly kindness. And of course, um, that's one of those big signs that God looks for in our lives as Christians. How are we treating one another? Because if we're not treating one another well, then how can we possibly treat God well? How can we treat one another badly and then walk into a church building and talk about how much we love God and want to be a Christian if we aren't behaving toward our fellow man the way that we should? So the Bible teaches us a lot about that, about being understanding. We preached on that last Sunday morning. Um, we see in the scriptures how we are to love one another. And God determines all of these things. He judges us for those very things. Uh, in regard to our relationship with him. And Jesus is famous for saying, you know, if you've clothed and fed, you know, one of my own, one of my children, uh, you have clothed and fed me, and so on. If you cared for me and visited me, if you did not do these things, uh, then you didn't do them to me. And so he's relaying our, our relationship with him 
through how we deal with one another in this life. And really, we've talked about that many times on many of these programs, because that's something that Peter learned, and it's something that he taught a lot about. So brotherly kindness, and you know, really, how, how do you ex- how can you explain it any better? I mean, kindness, <laughs> be kind. It, it should be a simple concept. It shouldn't. I shouldn't have to back it up with a dictionary definition of what being kind is. Just ask yourself this: How do you want people to treat you? And it goes back to the old classic golden rule: Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And of course, the thing that ties this all together is love. First Corinthians thirteen teaches us that without love, you know, none of the nothing else matters. The greatest of all these things is love. Now that passage doesn't say it right here, but we add to brotherly kindness love, and love is the tie that binds all of these together. And so what you'll find is that love is actually described in all of these other characteristics, these qualities of faith that we are to add to and build upon. You'll never reach a pinnacle in your life where you've perfected any one of these things, but you'll always grow. And these are goals that we should have in our lives to grow in our faith so that we can look back and say, okay, I am growing in faith. Uh, Not only do I Try strive to live according to these principles, but I want to receive them as well. And you'll see that among many other people uh, in your life as a Christian. These are the people that you want to associate with. These are the people that you want as your friends. The people that are going to treat you with this kind of respect and this kind of love, coupled with the things that we've talked about already, the knowledge of God's Word, godliness, moral excellence, all of those things. That's what you want in the people in your life. So be willing to give that to the people in your life as well. Most importantly, give it to God. That's the relationship we need to have with Him. Well, let's go on to verse 8, and um, let's look at how we put these qualities uh, together and grow in our faith in Jesus Christ. We'll read verses 8 through 11. It says, For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to uh, to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that definitely shows us these are the characteristics, the qualities of being a Christian, and that without them, we can't very well be in the kingdom of God, can we? Let's back up to verse 8 for just a moment, because he says, if these things are yours and abound, you'll be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we we do these things because of the knowledge that we gain in the Lord. A child must be taught, and we are God's children, and we must be taught the ways that we should go. And, you know, part of that growth is just learning. And if we don't learn something along the way, chances are we won't apply it to our lives. A lot of these don't come automatically for people. I've seen people with good characteristics about them that turned out to not have good character because they made choices in their life that took them away from their kindness or their goodness. Uh, I've seen people give the shirt off their back, you could say, to someone else. But unfortunately, it usually came with a cost or a price or an expectation. And so you'll find that uh, people take advantage of other people's goodness. Uh, So what he's telling us is we're looking at what we are in Christ. Like 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. Our fellowship is in Jesus Christ. So if we want to be rich, if we want to be filled with the goodness of the Lord and be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, well, you know, be in fellowship with the Lord. Add these characteristics and qualities Mm -hmm. to your faith and grow in him. Verse 9 says, He who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness. Here's the problem with people that don't add these characteristics to their lives, is that they oftentimes don't see it. An impatient person oftentimes doesn't see their impatience. Often they look at others and say, Why aren't they doing it the right way? Why aren't they doing it my way? And they become impatient with everyone else around them because the expectation is they need to be doing good. They need to be doing it my way. And we believe that our way is the right way. And that's not always the case. We've got to be very careful in the fact that we are people who need to center our expectations around godly things and not what we think 
or how we think things should be. So you know, that's just one example of that. And so we don't want to be short-sighted to blindness. We don't want to forget the fact that through Jesus and his sacrifice and all that he's done for us, he cleansed us from our old sins. He was um, became that sacrifice on the cross. We were baptized and had our sins washed away. Let's not throw all that away because we can't grow. Every day should be some growth for us. Spend the rest of your life growing. As I said earlier in the lesson, you're never going to reach the pinnacle. You're never going to say, okay, I've done that. I perfected it. Check it off the list. It doesn't work that way. It's always what we need to be. And you'll find older people, especially, that have grown in the Lord. Uh, they typically seem to perfect many of these qualities as they get older. And they'll tell you, hey, when I was young, I was a lot different. But with God in our lives... He's guided us, he's shown us the way, and he's shown us how to control our, uh, our character, control our demeanor, our attitudes, and how we handle the things of this life. So let's not forget what Jesus did for us. Let's not forget that we were cleansed of our old sins, and let's not revert back. There's so many people that do give up along the way. What is it that's so hard, really? You want to be kind and good, right? Well, why is that so difficult? It's what you expect of others, right? Then why is it difficult for you to treat others in the same way? And then one of my favorite passages is in verse 10 here. And I've said this on the program many times in the past. Is that I used to struggle with this idea that, you know, well, let's just read it. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Well, wait a minute. I'm a human being. I stumble. I sin. I, I mess up all the time. Well, that's true, but let's put it this way. I finally came to the realization that while I'm working on my diligence, while I am working on my faith and virtue and knowledge, while I'm practicing self-control, while I'm practicing patience and perseverance and godliness and brotherly kindness and love, while I'm doing these things, you're not going to have a lot of time or room to stumble. Think about that for just a moment. These are not just exercises that you do during the day. This becomes a part of who you are. It doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes along the way. But granted, when was the last time you stumbled as you were practicing an act of brotherly kindness? Chances are you weren't stumbling, were you? Brotherly kindness comes in many forms, not just doing good for somebody, but it could be about forgiveness could be about understanding. It could be about taking the high road in the situation. When you're doing those things, are you stumbling? No. We often tell people, put on your best behavior when you go to church. We'll tell that to our children growing up. Be on your best behavior. So we go to church, we're on our best behavior, and then we leave the doors of the building to do, to do what? Put on bad behavior? Certainly not. <laughs> we want to go and continue acting like we did while we were sitting there in that pew, while we were talking to brother or sister so-and-so. And in so doing, we just need to remember, keep that as your practice in your daily life. Practice in your daily life brotherly kindness and love and godliness. Ask yourself every day and every decisions that you make, what would God have me do in such and such situation? And while you're doing that, while you are doing these things, you are not stumbling. You are growing in your faith. That's the purpose. And then, of course, the great reward. Verse 11 for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's not only about being in His church, but it's about having everlasting life and being with God for all eternity. You grow in your faith. That's what you're going to get. And you're not going to want to stumble along the way. You're going to do everything you can not to make a mistake. Because in life, even though we might make a few mistakes along the way, we'll learn from them. We'll gain that knowledge, the knowledge of what not to do sometimes. And then we won't go back and repeat our same mistakes again. Well, I hope this lesson has been an encouragement to you. I hope that you will add to your faith. And if you'd like to talk more about it, please let me know. Northside Church of Christ at Hotmail.com. Or you can send us a message uh, through Facebook or our YouTube channel. Love to hear from you. If you'd like to be put on our mailing list, so that you can get links and access to other studies uh, that I send out weekly, uh, please send me an email, northsidechurchofchrist.hotmail.com. Ask to be put on our mailing list, and we'll send you videos and materials 
and things along the way. Thank you so much for joining us for Truth and Reason tonight. I hope you have a great week ahead. If we could do anything for you, please let us know. And may God bless you in your search for truth and reason.